Take a moment to think about how life has suddenly changed for the 64,000 American families that have lost a life or that have lost a loved one due to a drug overdose in just this past year alone. In fact, since the turn of the century, over 600,000 Americans have lost their life due to a drug overdose. Over 600,000. And what's more alarming is that more than half of these overdoses involve just one common drug class, opioids. Opioids are a class of highly addictive painkillers that are prescribed for patients suffering from, from chronic pain. To quote Sam Kionis from Dreamland, the morphine molecule exerts an analogous brainwashing on humans, pushing them to act contrary to their own self-interest in pursuit of that molecule. Substance abusers betray loved ones. They steal. They live under freeways in harsh weather and run similarly horrific risk to use that molecule. To clarify, morphine was the first synthetic opioid derived from the opium plant in the year of 1805. It was originally synthesized as a way to relieve pain using a less addictive substance than the opium plant itself. Based on what we know now, these, these opioids and other prescription medications are the fuel to the current drug epidemic, which is killing more Americans on an annual basis than HIV AIDS, than gun violence, and automobile accidents at each of their respective peaks. So today, my talk is designed to challenge you all to critically think about what you can do to make a difference in this epidemic. What can you do to prevent this from happening to one of your friends or one of your family members, perhaps even to yourself? So most of us don't even know that a simple behavior may be contributing to this epidemic. Allow me to explain. How many of you have ever not taken your full prescription? And then what? What did you do with those drugs? Did you get rid of them? Or were they left to linger in your medicine cabinet for days, for weeks, for months, perhaps, perhaps, yes, sometimes even for years? And now the simple question is why? Why did you not get rid of those drugs? Were you afraid that you may need to use them sometime soon if something unexpected happened? Were you holding on to something that was of value at one point? Or, like most, did we just simply not know how we should discard of them? So when I asked you earlier how you can make a difference in this epidemic, did you ever consider that properly disposing of your drugs could be that difference? The DEA and CDC have recently reported that roughly 70% of non-medical prescription opioid users are obtaining their supply directly from a friend or a family member and not from a written prescription. To put that into perspective, nearly seven out of 10 non-medical prescription opioid abusers are obtaining their supply from everyday run-of-the-mill citizens and not from an authorized professional that's licensed to do so. Yes, we are talking about everyday citizens. We're not even talking about drug dealers. But it doesn't stop there. Those that are disposing of their drugs often do it in a way that is harmful for the environment. Some surveyed consumers, they're simply just flushing them down the drain, which is OK, but I think we can do better. Flushing them down the drain just pollutes our environment. It dangerously affects some of our wildlife. Again, I think there's some room for improvement. Some surveyed consumers are mixing them with an unpalatable substance only to throw them in with normal trash. The recommended substances are coffee grinds, kitty litter, or even sawdust. And these substances, they don't do anything other than make the mixture just a, a little physically unappealing, if you will. Again, this is OK, but I think we can do better. Some surveyed consumers are even bringing their, their unused portions to a public location for safe and secure disposal. These locations are popping up in pharmacies, in hospitals, in law, law enforcement offices around the country. 
but the inconvenience of having to drive to and from one of these locations and the somewhat uncomfortable feeling of having to dispose of your drugs in a public location has limited the expected outcomes. It is estimated that since the program started in 2009, these, uh, these locations in whole have collected about 2% of the total volume of unused medica medications that have accumulated since that time period. Most, well, most survey consumers, they're not doing anything, and they're just keeping their supply. In fact, over 70% of patients prescribed an opioid not only reported having leftover amounts, but also reported keeping them. So I've been working on a concept for a few years now that I believe will streamline the process of drug disposal, making it more effective, more convenient, and safer for the environment. Here, I have a patent-pending drug disposal pouch that is capable of rendering medications inert and unusable. It's quite simple and easy to use, and if you guys allow me, I just want to show a quick demonstration. All you do is tear it open. You insert your medications. And then you add water. Seal it up and you're done. It works on solids, works on pills, patches, tablets, and it also works on liquids. Again, allow me to demonstrate. It's so simple. Tear it open. Insert your medications. Again, add water. And you're done. Seal it up. The addition of water functions to release a proprietary blend of chemicals that begins to neutralize the active components of many dangerous pharmaceuticals by rupturing major functional groups and molecularly altering the substance into a less abusive form. <coughs> Thus far, this blend of chemicals has been shown to be effective in neutralizing not just opioids, but other classes of drugs such as benzodiazepines, anesthetics, hormones, estrogens, several classes of over-the-counter medications. And in addition to rendering the substances inert and unusable, the addition of water, uh, sorry, in, in addition to rendering the substances inert and unusable, this blend of chemicals also functions to absorb the entire neutralized solution into a 100% biodegradable, eco-friendly gel. So it's quite simple. After the final seal, this package is fully absorbed, just takes a couple minutes. You can throw this directly in with normal trash. It is considered 100% landfill friendly, and you know that when you are discarding your drugs, you're not doing it in a way that may be polluting the environment. So my belief is with, with more convenient and more sustainable options, the end user market will be more apt to participate in a safe disposal campaign, which will in turn lead to many positive changes in the, in the drug epidemic, such as a reduction in the number of substance abusers even going down the pathway of addiction to start. This technology, this type of innovation, it empowers many stakeholders across the entire continuum of care at each separate intervention point. Not only do end users benefit directly from using the pouch, but doctors, pharmacists, policymakers, everybody, we can all use this tool as a way to push the, push the conversation forward in the direction for change. So to wrap everything up, whether you participate in a safe disposal campaign or not, I want you to know that there are a few simple changes that you can make today, when you go home today, that can make a difference in this epidemic. You can start by having a conversation with your child about the dangers of drugs. In fact, children who learn about these risks directly from their parent or their caregiver are up to 50% less likely to abuse drugs than children who do not obtain this information directly from home. 
the next time you get a prescription, you can actually listen to your doctor or your pharmacist when they ask you if you want to be consulted on how you should properly use this. I'm not asking anything major of you guys or anything too complex. There are just some tiny, simple little things that you can do to be a part of the solution. Thank you all very much for your time.